Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to my May wrap up. Today I'm going to be telling you about all the books I read in May. There were 13 in total. So to start off, as always with the monthly challenges, I did not read a non-fiction book this month. I fully intended to and then suddenly the second half of May seemed to be much shorter than the first half of May. I don't know how that happened, but anyway, I did not read a non-fiction book this month. Also, as usual, I picked two books out of my TBR bowl and this month I only read one out of those two. So again, I slightly failed with my challenges. It's been a busy month. From my TBR bowl, I picked out The Miniaturist by Jessie Burton, which I did not get around to reading, but will try and read in the next couple of months. The book that I picked out of my TBR bowl this month that I did read was The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. So The War of the Worlds, as you may or may not know, basically follows a Martian invasion to Britain. I have been meaning to read more H.G. Wells for ages and I really enjoyed his The Time Machine and the short stories of his that I have read, but I liked The War of the Worlds, but I didn't love it. The War of the Worlds is one of those books that I found more interesting than enjoyable. Like I found it a really interesting idea and I found a lot of the descriptions of the Martians and of their technology and the way that the narrator approaches that really, really interesting. But I found the narrative style of The War of the Worlds quite odd. It's told in the first person but it's not told in the moment and it's told with a lot of third person reflections on people that the first person narrator doesn't see. So there's a big section in the middle where our narrator tells you what's happening at that moment with his brother and he says my brother did this and my brother did that and he's not present in that scene but he's telling you about it because his brother told him about it later. Although we have a first person narrator he's describing things he hasn't seen which for me means the narrative distance is just quite large and often the narrator feels a long way away from the narrative. So that for me kind of not spoilt my enjoyment of it but meant I didn't really fully connect with it. The thing about The War of the Worlds is I just think it's not really my kind of apocalyptic novel. So I've mentioned before that the reason why I love Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel is that it is a book about people in the face of the end of the world. The War of the Worlds is not. The War of the Worlds is about the end of the world narrated by a person. Although I find apocalyptic novels really really interesting, what I'm interested in more is people and characters and I didn't feel that The War of the Worlds was really interested in that as much, which is fine, that's just the kind of book it is, but it meant I didn't love it as much as I might have done had it been a different book. Anyway, my general monthly challenge was to reread an old favourite book, so for this I continued on with my listening to Harry Potter on audiobook and reread slash listened to The Prisoner of Azkaban, which was when I was a teenager my favourite Harry Potter book and I would say definitely at this point remains so. For me The Prisoner of Azkaban is a bit more developed than The Chamber of Secrets and The Philosopher's Stone and we get many of my favourite characters appearing such as Remus Lupin and Sirius Black. I love the twists and turns of the plot in The Prisoner of Azkaban. The Time Turner is one of my favourite devices in Harry Potter. I find it really interesting rereading Harry Potter actually because I've always said and I still kind of stand by the fact that Harry Potter is the worst thing about Harry Potter. Harry Potter and Voldemort are the characters I find least interesting. Everyone else in Harry Potter for me is so much more interesting than them and I've always found Harry really annoying but rereading it now I think I actually feel a bit more sympathetic towards him and I do feel quite sorry for him at times so I, I feel like I'm starting to like Harry more as a character as well as all the rest so that's quite a nice thing to discover on rereading. Another thing I reread this month was Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. I was buddy reading this with Caroline from BBC Girl, I will link her channel down below. This was her first time reading Oliver Twist and it was my second. Oliver Twist as I'm sure you all know is about a boy called Oliver Twist who is born in a workhouse and ends up getting into quite a lot of scrapes over his life and it is basically about his adventures and the bad and nice people that he gets caught up with at various points in his life. Oliver Twist has always been my least favourite Dickens novel. It is still my least favourite Dickens novel after having read it again, but I think I appreciated certain things about it more this time and I'm certainly glad that I have reread it. There are several things that mean that this book is not my favourite. There are some unpleasant aspects of the plot, such as the anti-Semitic portrayal of Fagin, and then I've always found Oliver Twist's personality to be lacking and non-existent. I do love Dickens a great deal, but Oliver Twist for me is one of his weakest characters in what I perceive as his weakest book. Oliver Twist to me just doesn't have any personality and I didn't find him to have any more personality on a rereading and I think that's kind of the point. I think he's a bit of an everyman slash every boy character but I still find it hard to have that much interest in him. Obviously you feel bad for Oliver Twist because a lot of rubbish happens to him but he's just not a fully developed character. One thing I did notice on this rereading was that I enjoyed the second half massively more than the first and I did really get into the plot by the second half of the book. I still think Bill Sykes and Nancy are very very interesting characters and there are some brilliant scenes and speeches from Nancy in this but it still remains my least favourite Dickens and is quite a long way 
below the rest of Dickens. I know it's not as good as Dickens can be. Of course on the Dickens theme this month I also read the first four chapters of Our Mutual Friend as part of my Victorian style read along that I'm currently running. I will link down below the video where I talk about the first four chapters at quite a great length and I will also link down below the Goodreads group if anyone wants to join in. Sticking with the theme of classics I also read Two on a Tower by Thomas Hardy. I buddy read this with Yamini from The Skeptical Reader and from Beyond the Pages and Alicia from Ex Libris. I hope you all enjoy my nice um, very very tasteful 70s cover I've got here. It's not not the greatest is it? There is a woman called Lady Constantine whose husband has been away for a very very long time. No one really knows exactly what's happened to him and she is very lonely because she made this promise before he left that she was going to exclude herself from society because her husband was really jealous. And then Lady Constantine notices that there is someone at the top of this tower on her land, someone who is watching the stars with a telescope. This turns out to be a young man called Swithin St Cleves who is about 10 years her junior. He is a uh, amateur astronomer, really wants to go into astronomy, is fascinated by sort of the sky and the cosmos, and the book is basically about the difficult situation these two characters find themselves in and their sort of odd connection. I did like this but I think this is probably my least favourite Hardy so far. What me, Yamini, Alicia and Ange all felt about this was that you connected with the situation rather than the characters and the characters themselves didn't seem to be as developed as Hardy's normally are. I think I would have liked it more if it hadn't been for the ending but I felt the ending was a bit anticlimactic and didn't quite work. I felt the Hardy gave the book the wrong ending and the last chapter was a real disappointment for me but I did enjoy his writing style as always and I definitely want to go on reading more Hardy because Hardy is still brilliant this is just my least favourite one so far. Moving on to slightly more modern classics I also read We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. I love this book so much and it was one of those books where it was really really good and then I got to a point about halfway through and suddenly in one sentence it stopped being really really good and became brilliant and utterly incredible. Our narrator is a girl of about 18 called Mary Cat and she lives in a house with her sister and her her uncle. All of society, all the neighbours have kind of shunned them because many years ago Mary Cat's elder sister was accused of poisoning the entire family. She was eventually acquitted but it still means that most of the neighbours ignore their family and really shun their society because many of them still think that Constance is a murderer. This book is so brilliant, it is so well written, so descriptive, so deep, so exciting and fascinating and sad and just incredible really. I'm gonna read the first sentence for you or the first couple of sentences because I thought they were wonderful. My name is Mary Catherine Blackwood. I am 18 years old and I live with my sister Constance. I have often thought that with any luck at all I could have been born a werewolf because the two middle fingers on both my hands are the same length, but I have had to be content with what I had. I thought it was incredible and I'm definitely going to be reading more Shirley Jackson in the future. I also read Excellent Women by Barbara Pym. I haven't read any Barbara Pym before but she was a novelist working in the kind of middle of the 20th century in Britain and she's often being compared to Jane Austen. It definitely has that Jane Austen wit about it and also that kind of social criticism. I love the writing style and I found it both very funny and at times really moving and sad in a way that I didn't quite expect. It's about this woman called Mildred who's in her 30s. She basically has a reputation for being nice. Everyone knows she's nice she does favours for everyone, she tries to be kind and caring to everyone and then she has these neighbours who move in downstairs to her, this married couple who seem to be in the middle of getting a divorce and they have a lot of massive fights and Mildred gets kind of caught up in their world and it's just a great story, I thought it was really good and really well done and the ending was perfect. I thought the ending for a moment was going to be something else and it would have been really cross if it had been something else and I thought the ending as it was was just, just, just perfect. I also read Watership Down by Richard Adams, it was a really great adventure story and movie in ways that I hadn't quite expected. I think because I saw the film when I was a very young child quite a while ago and I didn't really remember it fully but I remember bits so I was sort of vaguely familiar with the plot of the first half of this book but I didn't know the second half and actually I think I probably preferred the second half and I felt like especially in the last third of the book a lot of really fascinating things happened. I read the last third of the book like practically in one go and I found it really really dramatic and really engaging and I was really like desperate to read on because so much drama and excitement was happening. Watership Down is basically about a group of rabbits who decide to leave their warren because one of them has a premonition of some danger coming to the warren and it's about their adventure travelling across the countryside and their aims to set up their new warren. What I really loved about this I think the most was that much more than any other animal led books I've read the rabbits really had their own personalities individually and then as a group they also really had their own culture and they have a lot of like folklore and they tell each other stories which are kind of their mythology or their religion almost and I really liked that. I thought that was done really well and was a really nice touch that helped really make it feel like a real world and I really liked that. I thought that was just done really really well. This month I also read Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury which I really really enjoyed. The book is about a man called Montag who is a fireman and in this dystopian society in which he lives firemen do not 
not put out fires, they start fires to burn books because books are considered to be evil and bad and they are against the law. And the novel basically deals with Montag's growing disillusionment with his society that he lives in and with what he does. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Ray Bradbury has a very distinctive odd writing style and at first I, it took me a little while to get into because his language is quite odd but actually I came to really really enjoy it and really like it. I really like the character of Montag and I thought he was done very well and at times he behaves irrationally because it felt like how someone would react in that kind of situation. I love the whole premise because obviously as someone that loves books the idea of a society where people burn books is like awful to me and the way it was developed was just very very good and I thought the ending was superb. The only thing I will say about it was that I would have liked more details of the everyday lives, like I couldn't quite visualise everything and I couldn't quite imagine how most people went about their ordinary lives in this world. I was thinking about it in comparison to 1984 and on balance I think I might actually prefer Fahrenheit 451 because I, I like the kind of narrative structure of it more and I feel I sympathise more with the characters than in 1984 but I feel like the world is better developed in 1984 than Fahrenheit 451 but I still would definitely recommend it and think it's a really interesting book to read. Moving on to more contemporary fiction. At the beginning of this month I read The Porcupine by Julian Barnes. I don't have a physical copy because I borrowed this from my boyfriend Nick while I was up staying with him and just read it in like a day because it is very very short, it's just a novella but I really really liked The Porcupine. It was written and is set in the 1990s and follows the trial of a dictator who led a satellite state of the USSR, so somewhere in Eastern Europe, and it is about the downfall of this man and his trial and what happens to the man who is the lawyer who is trying him. The Porcupine, I would say, is my favourite book of Julian Barnes that I have read so far. I have read three other of his books. I have read The History of the World in Ten and a Half Chapters, The Sense of an Ending, and also England, England. And the thing I have always felt about Julian Barnes, which I felt on his other three books, was that he's one of those writers who is a much better a novelist than he is a storyteller. He writes really interesting novels that deal well with themes and have good writing but I never feel really engaged in the story. I never feel like it's the stories or the characters I'm reading his books for. I never feel properly engaged. I always feel like it's a book that I am studying even when I'm not. But I definitely didn't feel that with The Porcupine. I felt myself much more engaged with the plot and the characters and I felt it to be a much better story than his other novels. I also thought that it was a really fascinating sort of historical period to look at and a really interesting premise so I really really enjoyed that and I would definitely recommend it because it's not a Julian Barr's novel that I hear talked about that much. I also read The Brilliant Grace Keepers by Kirsty Logan which I buddy read with Olivia Pope. I will link her channel down below. It is very very good. This book, if you haven't heard much about it already, is set in a world where nearly everything is underwater so the vast majority of the world is underwater and there isn't that much land left and the world is kind of divided into people who live on the sea and people who live on land. And we follow these two characters. One is a girl called North who lives on a circus boat with her bear. The other character, Kalanish, is a grace keeper, which means she looks after these birds which play an important part in like the funeral rituals of this society. I found the society and the world in this was built so well. I also love the connection and relationship between North and Kalanish. They don't spend that much time together in the novel, but the time they do spend together is very well developed and very well done. All in all, I just thought this was a really beautiful novel. I thought the ending was done really well and the writing throughout was very strong. I've also read her short story collection, The Rental Heart and Other Fairy Tales, which I really really liked as well and I'm definitely keen to pick up The Portable Shelter at some point in the future because I think she's a really interesting writer with sort of beautiful language as well as great ideas and characters. And I also read The Lola Quartet which is by quite a long way my favourite book of the month and I'm certain will be one of my favourite books of the year. This is incredible. You have probably all heard everyone talking about her novel Station Eleven which is brilliant but so is this and I wasn't expecting it to be as brilliant because I love Station Eleven so much and I knew that this was not as big a story it's not post-apocalyptic and on the surface it seems that it deals with quite different themes so this book is about a man called Gavin and ten years after he has left school he sees a photograph of a little girl of the age of ten who looks very very like him and has the same surname as his high school girlfriend and this photograph sparks off this massive chain of events which bring together Gavin with his friends from high school and the book basically deals with the kind of unraveling of just what happened ten years ago when they left school as well as with a lot of drama that is going on in the present. I wrote a full book review of this on my blog which I will link down below. It's such, such a brilliant book and I feel like Station Eleven is getting all the attention and this deserves a lot of attention too. In the same way that I found in Station Eleven, her writing is beautiful and her characters, she just has this way of getting into characters so quickly and really summing up someone in a really 
quick brief way that you get such a strong sense of these people even if you don't spend that much time with them and as with Station Eleven I found that her balance between sort of fascinating characters and beautiful writing is matched so well with her dramatic plots. This book is so exciting and so dramatic. The plot is brilliantly paced but it also deals so cleverly with a lot of themes and a lot of characters. It deals with how people change over time, it deals with money, it deals with love, it deals with a lot of really significant moral questions and as well it's all set in the backdrop of the recession in a way that kind of trickles into the plot in a fascinating way. It's just so good. Please everyone go and read this. It is brilliant. I also read Lucy Wood's Diving Bells which is a short story collection that I really really loved. I thought this was beautifully written. These stories are all linked by themes of the sea and the coast and they're brought together by sort of fairy tale elements but done in a really like nice tasteful understated way. I love the magic realism in here. This is just my style of magic realism, just like the right level for me. And there are so many stories in here that are just so beautiful and so well done. I love the way Lucy Wood captures the normality of life alongside these fairy tale elements. I think it's interweaved brilliantly and done really well. My favourite story in this was a story called Notes from the House Spirits, which is basically just notes from little creatures that live in your house and they're just watching like the people over time and how things change and it's just absolutely beautifully written just a wonderful wonderful story the writing in this is so superb and i am really excited to read some other stuff by her as well i think she has a novel or two out so i'll be looking into them in the future and finally i read selected poems by kate clancy i love this a great deal I am really interested in Kate Clancy. I have read her novel Meeting the English which is brilliant and her short story collection The Not Dead and the Save which is also very brilliant and this too yes very very brilliant indeed. I'd say that this is one of my favourite poetry collections that I've ever read. I thought it was really really interesting and beautiful and she just has a great way with words. She's one of those writers that just knows where the words ought to go and puts them in the right places in a way that just just works brilliantly. I'm going to read you one of her poems because I feel that's the best way to explain what she does. This is Our Balloon. And look, look, it is in the shape of balloons. Anyway, our balloon. I'm drawing a hot air balloon, a canopy with felt pen stripes, a scratchy penciled basket. He says it must have people in it, so I put him in, two dots, a grin, and since he goes nowhere solo, add his father as a beard, myself as curls, and on request and out of scale, the cat's two ears and one stroke tail. There, he stares. I think about balloons, the roar up there, the chills, the helpless, mild boredom. Do you talk? I think you can't. I think you must shade your eyes and mime towards some house, some farm, shrunk in a diagram and shout to the wind, wonderful time. Us in balloon, he says. We are. It is. And since he'll not be parted from it, I fold up his balloon and tuck it in his pocket. So, those are all the books that I have read in the month of May. Please let me know if you have read any of these books or if you are interested in reading these books. And please let me know what your favourite book of the month has been. I'm always interested to hear what other people have been reading. I'll be back very soon with another video and in the meantime, happy reading.